In this video, I'm going to show you the best passing play in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, what I do on YouTube is I help people get better at Madden. So if you're looking to get better at this game, whether it be on the offensive side of the ball or the defensive side of the ball, I would highly encourage you to go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. I upload eight videos every single day with tips and tricks, just like the one I'm about to share with you um, about how you can go about getting better at this game. Now, really quickly, I just wanted to share with you one of my favorite passing plays in the game. Uh, it really is probably in my opinion it's the best passing play in the game um, you might disagree with that and that's okay but I believe this is the best passing play in the entire game now if you want to get the full offense this is from the gun Y off trips pats we're gonna be going over the play pat slot out today I'm gonna to share with you a couple of different versions of setups that you can build around one route but before we jump into that if you want to get the full ebook from New England I actually have an entire ebook that breaks down every single one of the 36 formations in the New England playbook in the description of this video. It's the best ebook I've ever written and I would highly encourage you to pick it up. That link is in the description. But other than that, if you have any questions, you can always text me. My number is in the top left hand corner of your screen and let's go over Pat's slot out. Okay, so Pat's slot out. First and foremost, when you run this formation as a general rule, Okay, general rule doesn't have to always be the case, but it's generally true. You want to have your trips, your three receivers on the right side of the screen. Now, this route to Chris Godwin, I personally think it's one of the best routes in the entire game um, because it has, essentially, it has um, kind of a, a little bit of a rounding, it, 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 like for one step ahead corners, this route to Chris Godwin does a really good job at getting separation. So if you have a hot route master quarterback, you can obviously you know do a lot of things with this scheme so we're going to show you that today but even if you don't you don't have to you don't have to have a, a hot route master quarterback to run this so what we're going to do is we're going to put our running back on a flat route now he could be on all kinds of different routes right he could be on a wheel route he could be on a table route he could be on a ghost route ghost routes one of my favorites lately he could also be on a swing route any of those routes he can be on and be effective now what I like to do is I actually like to put him on a flat route most of the time or a swing route those are kind of my two go-to's or a wheel route okay now the first setup I'm going to show you is literally just putting the running back on a swing route and that's it and all we're gonna do is we're gonna motion this player here Chris Godwin and we're gonna snap him way out here we're gonna let him get all the way out here and what you'll see is a nice little man switch that's going to occur. And as you can see, Chris Godwin is going to be our number one read on this play. The player that we want to throw the ball to most is we want to throw the ball to Chris Godwin. And you can mess with the snap. You can snap him right here. You can also snap. There's three different points at which you can snap Chris Godwin, and this would be very effective. And all three of the points do different things. Um, you saw that the first way that we did it, did a specific thing for Antonio Brown, meaning if it's man coverage, if we think it's man coverage, we don't want to snap him all the way out there. If we think it's man coverage, we want to snap him right here, like super early, and as you see, it's going to get him a nice inside leverage, and you're going to be able to run uh, wide open. Now, really quickly, one little pro tip with this scheme, especially if you're an ultimate team, if you're playing ultimate team, make sure that Deion Sanders is where Chris Godwin is because it's this setup right here is going to allow you to playmaker him all over the field. So put playmaker on Deion Sanders and snap him right about there. This is the second way that you could snap him. You can snap him like right when they get even. This prevents both of them from getting pressed, um, which I think is really, really cool. So, for example, like let's say they're running pressed man, right? That's kind of the meta. If I snap him right here, you see that neither one of them are going to get jammed. They're going to get free release. And as you can see, Chris Godwin is going to be open over and over again. Now, the, And then the last way to snap him is the way I did it in the very beginning. So let's say that they do, you know, let's say that this is better for zone coverage. If they're running a lot of zone, I let him get all the way out here. Because you'll see if he gets all the way out here, man coverage does a lot better of a job, as you can see right there. It also, but if they're in zone coverage, and we're going to jump into that in just a second. Let's say they're playing cover three. The beauty of this formation is technically the strong side of the formation is to the right and the weak side of the formation is to the left. But when you use motion, you can basically create essentially gun doubles 
now to the left side, where the left side is now the strong side and the right side is the weak side. So this is an example of doing that out of a cover three style defense. This is why this is probably one of my favorite plays against any kind of cover three. But what you'll see is the the the, the you can essentially um, you can essentially snap throw this route, and we'll show you the three different motions against cover three as well. So another way that you can snap that was the first way, and I just want to show you really quickly. This is with hard flats and stuff like that. And if you look here, you see hard flat out there. You see that the running back is going to typically take the hard flat out of the way so that you can then be effective. So, And you don't have to have a table route. I think technically, honestly, if I was if I was telling you exactly how I would do it, the wheel route or the swing route are actually better because they pull the flats much, much better. You see the flat is pulled a little bit earlier, and I'm able to hit that route over and over again. And I can throw that quick, on time, over and over and over again. And it is one of the most effective routes in the game. And the reason why is because, let's say they run Tampa 2. Okay, let's say they run Tampa 2. Watch this Watch this route to Fournette. You'll see how this pulls. Watch this. Watch what happens here. So get him out. You see that? See how that streak pulls that yellow? Three yards. Three yards. Three yards. Just layups over and over and over again. That is my favorite route to throw in the game. And I will throw it through and through. And then what's going to happen is they're going to start to get tired of it, right? So they're going to be pressing, shading underneath. They might put their yellows at five yards. There's all kinds of things that they can do, right? So if I run this, you'll also notice that in a Tampa 2, if they start doing that, when you motion that receiver outside of Antonio Brown, it gives you the room and the margin to be able to hit that streak. And I'll show you that one more time here. So this is Tampa 2. And I got the wheel route to the running back. Now watch this right here. This is not shaded down. This is just standard Tampa 2. Watch what happens. If I get him out here, watch the corner on the left. You see the corner? See where he's looking? He's look, and I'll, I'll show you an instant replay. Instead of looking at the fade route, which is who you would anticipate him looking at, he's going to look at the first receiver on the outside. Well, because you let this this guy get all the way over here, watch this. He's going to ignore the fade. Watch. Look who this corner looks at. I mean, he's looking at the quarterback, obviously. But you see he's looking at Godwin. See that right there? That leaves a window where you can throw that against Tampa 2 all day long. So now the defense is going to have – I mean, there's so many dilemmas that you're going to put the defense in with this motion snap. So the next thing that I want to show you is how this responds to cover 3, right? We talked a little bit about cover 3, but we didn't talk a ton about it. So the wheel route to the running back I think is super critical, either a swing or a wheel. And I want you to watch the corner here on the left side. You see that he instantly goes with Antonio Brown, and if I try to lob this up, I get stopped. There's nothing I can do, right? The thing that you can do, though, especially against a lot of cover 3s, most popular cover 3s. Let me show you my play art. You see that the safety is on that right side? So now what you're going to you're going to notice and a lot of people will do this. A lot of people will put a Mabel coverage to the left. Right? They're going to have a hard flat to the left. But if they don't, it, it it's not that big of a deal. If they have the yellow in the middle field, it's still not a big of a deal. Watch Antonio Brown. Watch this window right here. I can pass lead him inside and I can click on and secure catch it every single time. So I have that as an option against the defense. Now the other thing is, let's say that you start to notice that they are running a lot of cover 3. If they're running a lot of cover three, then you can mess with this timing of this snap. So meaning I can snap him inside. Watch what happens when I snap him inside. I got a decent chance at lobbing this up. I didn't quite get it there, but I had a decent chance of lobbing that up. The other thing that I can do, again, this is traditional cover three, is you'll notice that I could take Chris Godwin and when I begin to motion him, I could do anything I want. So I could put him on a quarter route. And I'm not saying that this is what I would do, but this is just an example of what you could do uh, in this situation. So I put him out, motion him all the way out here, put him on the corner route, and you see this, the corner does go back with him, but it's just to show that this is an option. So that leaves you with a little bit of a predicament. And if they're running a lot of cover three, there's answers to that. But for right now, I want to share just, stick with just this play. And I want to show you what to do if they put a deep half out there. This is a very popular concept as well. A lot of people like to use deep halves on their corners um, in a cover three. Well, this does a really good job at beating that coverage. So if you watch it, watch God when you want to get him all the way out here. 
and just watch. This is an outside pass lead. I cannot tell you how many uh, touchdowns I've thrown on this. If they run cover two invert, right, or if they run some type of inverted cover three, it's a one-play touchdown, automatically a one-play touchdown, right? It's it's literally and, – and the thing is – you can snap Godwin pretty much anywhere. You don't have to. You don't have to. Just as long as we get, like, watch right here. See there, I snapped him inside, and I still got this animation that I'm looking for. The one play touchdown against the cover three invert. Now, let's take it a step further, and let's talk about cover four. Um, so cover four. If I have an out, and, and really I'm going to start with an outside quarter, and then I'm going to work with the inside quarters here in just a second. But if you if you watch Godwin here. If I have an outside quarter on that left side guy and Godwin is on his route and I let him get out here, you see that I have a decent chance of getting this, but Perry Nickerson does a good job at getting back and recovering on the ball. So it leaves you with a little bit of a dilemma and one that I think is, is worth you know diving into a little bit here. So the thing that you have to understand is you might need to put Godwin on an in route, a traditional five-yard in route as well, occasionally. Right, the drag doesn't always get there. So if, if I'm playing outside court, you know, if they're playing that cover four, and I run something like this, you know, again, the running back's wide open. We understand that, but that's just to recognize, okay, cover four might need a, a little bit different of a of a result. The the one thing I will say is cover four does the best job out of any defense at defending the lob streak to Antonio Brown. I did not say it does a good job at defending the entire play though. And that's where, you know, again, this is inside quarter. So if I snap him, you know, you see. You see, you notice also that the inside quarter doesn't defend Antonio Brown. It's just the outside quarter. So if I can, you know, figure out how to deal with that, then I can really have a play that is really, really tough to stop. But it's one of those things where cover four, if you make an adjustment to it, cover two might stop it. If you make another adjustment to it, cover three might stop it. So the last adjustment that I want to share with you is something like this right here. It's a little smoke screen motion snap him that might get you you know a little bit farther but again it is what it is so you have this play that beats so many popular coverages a lot of people like to play mabel coverage with that route the next way that you can run this play and this is when people start to run a lot of like just basic cover three right once they start to become comfortable running basic cover three then you can go to something like this we're going to put Antonio Brown on a smart routed corner route. We're going to take the running back. We're going to put him on that ghost route, and we're going to do that same motion. So everything looks exactly the same. But watch Rob Gronkowski on this play. You'll notice that the corner route goes that way, and we have a pretty good shot. Again, as long as Brady doesn't get to throw out a sack, we'll have a pretty good shot at getting Gronkowski up the middle of the seams. You're going to force people to run cover three. I'm telling you right now, a lot of people will run cover three or they'll run cover four against this offense. So once they start doing that, there's an always you have to have an answer for everything. So look right here, watch this tight end. You see him streaking right up the middle, and that's a one play touchdown against the cover three, or a big gain at least against cover three. So that's another reason why you could potentially want to leave that route to um, that route to Gronkowski up there. That, uh, that little angled post route. Another thing you'll notice is let's say they run cover two and we'll work on this back side. You see that Godwin is going to do a really, really good job at bringing everything underneath. So they're going to have to, you know, typically they will use her, the post route. And the thing that is something that you need to understand, let's say that they, uh, let's say that they just jump right at Chris Godwin. This post route to the tight end does a good job at getting underneath the cover three as well. Okay, It's not just something that can get over the top of cover three. It's also something that can get underneath it, um, which is really, really good because if they're running a lot of cover three on you, you you're not going to have to worry about it because, again, they're shading their coverage. They're, they're having to come down to stop Godwin. These yellows can't get back on him on Gronkowski. So your tight end really serves as a, as a great route. And then the last step is this route to Mike Evans. Now, this is one of the best routes in the entire game if you know how to throw it, okay, if you know how to throw it. So, again, you look left, but on, right on the cut. This is a route that needs to be thrown right on the cut. And one step ahead, corners do okay against this. I will admit that. 
And so occasionally what you might want to do is you might just want to put him on a skinny post, right, and smart route it. That's understandable. But again, this this route, I love this route to Mike Evans. I wish that this route would keep going. The one issue I have with it is it does randomly stop. Um, it will stop at certain points. So that's just something you have to understand. So like right here, watch him. Dragon, 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 dragon. If you pass lead left, he might keep going, but he generally will kind of stop in the middle of the field. Now the last thing I want to share with you today is an additional setup. And just a quick reminder, if you want to get my full U-Trips offense, um, I have a sample of it in my text message membership, which you can text me my numbers in the top left-hand corner. It's also in the description. But if you want to get the full ebook on this playbook, which is an amazing ebook that is very long and very in depth, um, then that link is in the description. One other setup that I really like is to simply take the running back, put him on a flat, and put Gronk on a cross route. And the reason I like to do that is that's where I like to put Mike Evans on that skinny post. Um, because this is just kind of that, you know, more of a man coverage beater if you do it like this. Because if you have a tight end that has. Um, good route running this post route doesn't really beat man um, you'll see here like I mean it just doesn't really beat man as you can see I mean it does okay but it really you know really doesn't beat it okay so that's just something but a crossing route does beat man and so that's where you know you could do something like this um, and you'll see and again you can really build an offense around this route but you have the now you have essentially um, kind of a similar setup to the trips tight end X spot. A lot of people like X spot. This is kind of similar to that. Uh, you'll notice that your your crossing route will almost always beat man to man, and almost always they'll go user it too. So you have that. Um, and then one other thing, as far as like if you're worried, if you think you're facing a little bit more of a man to man type of thing then that's where I really do like this setup right here. Um, essentially, it's kind of a similar deal, but the biggest difference is I'm going to take the tight end, and I'm going to leave the – I'm going to take the tight end, I'm going to put him on a post or a cross route, either one of those, right? Godwin's going to go on a crossing route, so we're going to have double crossings essentially, and then we're going to have a skinny post over the top. This is a very – more of a shot play against man coverage – but it's really, really good. This route to Godwin is super effective against man. As you can see, it gets wide open. And um, the other routes are going to be really, 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 really good as well. The one thing about that play right there is you don't have a lot of quick reads, right? The reads are late in the play, but it's, it's one of those plays that does do really, really well. Um, the one thing I would say is you want to make sure to look at that running back. If the running back's open, throw it to him. Okay? But... That is, um, that's another way to run this play. And there's several ways to run this. One, I mean, even another one that you could use is to take Godwin and put him on a curl route and then to simply drag Mike Evans. I use this setup all the time. It's that same type of mentality um, as far as that, but you're going to snap him right about here. And, um, you know, again, that post on the tight end, if you might, you might want to put it on a regular post or whatever. But this play is money. Um, there's so much you can do with this play. Um, it's it's ridiculous how much you can really do with this one play. Um, and again, I just think the I think this play will really help your offense. It's helped my offense a ton. Like if, and again, just getting good at reading this play is 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 money. One last, I guess, one last setup I will give you, and this is more of a clear out. Like if you're playing if you're playing a lot of Mabel coverage, this is what I like to do. But it's simply. Um, I'm going to wheel the running back. I'm going to take Gronk and put him on a flat. And then I'm going to put the outside receiver on the left on a curl. And, again, that same motion right in here. And normally this that creates so much space to be able to throw that route to Chris Godwin all day long. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, I hope you realize, you know, this is just one play of over, you know, 400 plays in our New England Patriots ebook with over 35 formations. So we go in depth in that ebook teaching you everything you need to know. So if you have not picked it up yet, there's a link in the description. And if you would like a sample to the ebook, uh, just text me. My phone number is 812 216 3644. I want to invite you to tonight's live stream. We're going to be streaming tonight at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So make sure to come by uh, and hang out. We'll be playing Madden with our subscribers. Last thing for you is I just want to remind you if you would like to get the ebook, that link is in the description of this video. And if you need any help, 
make sure to text me. My phone number is 812-216-3644. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on tonight's stream.